Hello and welcome to another episode of The Word for Kids. I'm Jamie and I'm guiding you through the books of 1st and 2nd Samuel in a series of 20 episodes. Last time we learned that God told Samuel he would send him a Benjamite man whom he was to appoint as ruler of the people of Israel. And along came Saul and his servant looking for his father's lost donkeys. When Samuel met Saul, the Lord told him, This is the man I spoke to you about. Samuel told Saul not to worry about the lost donkeys because they had already been found, but instead to join him for a meal at the high place. When Saul arrived, Samuel sat him at the head of the table and gave him the best portion of meat. The next morning, Samuel anointed Saul with oil when it was just the two of them together. Later, Samuel called together all of the Israelites and publicly chose Saul as the new king. And that's where we left off last time. Are you ready for today's adventure? Let's go! Samuel said to all Israel, I have listened to you and set a king over you, but I am old and gray. I have been your leader from my youth until this day. Testify against me in the presence of the Lord and your anointed king. Whom have I cheated or oppressed or stolen from? Have I ever taken a bribe? If I have done any of these things, I will make it right. The people replied, You have never cheated or oppressed us, and you have not taken anything from anyone's hand. They were agreeing with Samuel that he had been a fair and righteous leader. He told them that the Lord was a witness of this, and they agreed. Then Samuel reminded the people of all the righteous acts God had done for them and their ancestors. Let's pause right there for today's Word of the Day. Hello again, kids. My name is Eugene, and once again, I have another Word of the Day. Well... Again, it's like a phrase. So today's phrase of the day is righteous acts. Now righteous acts is when God's people, the Israelites, ask God for help to make a situation right. Righteous acts. We've talked a lot on the Word for Kids about the hand of God and the miracles he did to save his people, the Israelites. They would get into trouble, call out to God, he would save them, and then eventually they'd get themselves into trouble again. So here, Samuel reminded the Israelites that God had used Moses and Aaron to bring them out of slavery in Egypt and settle them in the promised land. If you remember this from Exodus, God's righteous acts included sending blood, frogs, flies, and gnats, among other things, on the Egyptians, as well as parting the sea for the people to cross through. But as Samuel reminded them, after settling in the promised land, the people turned away from the true God and worshipped other gods. However, when the Philistines oppressed them, they cried out to God for help, and he came to their rescue again. As we learned in the book of Joshua last year, he held back water in the Jordan River for them to cross, threw numerous enemy armies into confusion so the Israelites could defeat them, and crumbled Jericho to the ground when Joshua and his army marched around it and blew trumpets. So after Samuel reminded the people of the righteous acts God had done to prove himself to the Israelites over and over again through the generations, he then reminded them that they had just made yet another mistake. Samuel said, when you saw the king Nahash moving against you, you asked for a king, even though the Lord your God was your king. Now here is the king you have chosen, the one you asked for. See, the Lord has set a king before you. If you fear the Lord and serve and obey him and do not rebel against his commands, and if both you and the king who reigns over you follow the Lord your God, good. But if you do not obey the Lord and if you rebel against his commands, his hand will be against you as it was against your ancestors. Now you will see this great thing the Lord is about to do before your eyes. It was a time for wheat harvest, and Samuel told the people he would call on the Lord to send thunder and rain so they would realize what an evil thing they did in God's eyes when they asked for a king. This would be devastating to them because heavy rain during a harvest would ruin their crop. Samuel did call on the Lord, and that same day the Lord sent thunder and rain, so all the people stood in awe of God and of Samuel. Pray to the Lord your God for us so that we will not die, they said. Samuel replied, Do not be afraid, even though you've done all this evil. Do not turn away from the Lord, but serve him with all your heart. Do not turn away to useless idols that cannot rescue anyone. 
For the sake of his great name, the Lord will not reject his people. Samuel told the people he would pray for them as they had asked. Now, when Saul became king, he was 30 years old, and he reigned over Israel for 42 years. Saul chose 3,000 men from Israel, 2,000 of them were with him, and 1,000 were with his son Jonathan at Gibeah. Jonathan attacked the Philistine outpost at Geba. An outpost is a small military camp at a distance from the main force of soldiers. Saul let all of Israel know that the Philistine outpost had been attacked by blowing a trumpet throughout the land and shouting, Let all Israel hear! So Saul summoned the people to join him at Gilgal. The Philistines got ready to fight Israel and brought 3,000 chariots with 6,000 charioteers and soldiers as numerous as the sand on the seashore. When the Israelites saw their situation was critical and that their army was hard-pressed, they hid in caves and thickets, among the rocks, and in pits and cisterns, which are tanks for storing water. Some even crossed the Jordan River to hide. But Saul remained at Gilgal, and all the troops with him were quaking in fear. He waited seven days, which was the time set by Samuel, but Samuel did not come to Gilgal, and Saul's men began to scatter. So Saul offered the burnt offering. Just as he finished making the offering, Samuel arrived, and Saul went out to greet him. But Samuel asked him, What have you done? Saul said, When I saw that the men were scattering, and that you did not come at the set time, and that the Philistines were assembling at Michmash, I thought, Now the Philistines will come down against me at Gilgal, and I have not sought the Lord's favor. So I felt compelled to offer the burnt offering. But Samuel said, You have done a foolish thing. You have not kept the command the Lord your God gave you. If you had, he would have established your kingdom over Israel for all time. But now your kingdom will not endure. The Lord has sought out a man after his own heart and appointed him ruler of his people, because you have not kept the Lord's command. Later, we'll learn who this man after God's heart was. Samuel left Gilgal and went up to Gibeah. Saul counted the men who were with him, and there were about 600. And that's where our story ends for today. It's time for the verse to remember. Today's verse is 1 Samuel 12, 24. But be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. One more time. But be sure to fear the Lord and serve him faithfully with all your heart. Consider what great things he has done for you. 1 Samuel 12, 24. Did you notice in today's story, Samuel made it a point to remind the people of all that God had done for them? This is something many leaders spent time doing with the Israelites. It's almost like they kept forgetting all the amazing things God had done for them and didn't believe he could still do those things. It might seem ridiculous at first that they would need to be reminded about such amazing things, but when you really think about it, don't we all do the same thing? When things are going smoothly, it's easy to stop thinking about all that God has brought us through and start to feel like we can get by on our own. But then we find ourselves in some new difficulty or challenge or struggle, and we can't find our own way out. And we pray to God, God, where are you? Come help us. Really, God was there all along, but we were too distracted or too wrapped up in ourselves to recognize all that he was doing. Take some time today to remember the things God has done in your life. Maybe he hasn't brought down a plague of flies on someone who mistreated you, but instead sent you a friend when you really needed one, or helped you get through an illness or overcome a fear. God is always working in our lives. That's all the time we have for today. I can't wait to see you again soon for another episode of The Word for Kids.